Hello everyone, today we will open up a Legend of the Five Rings Dynasty Pack, the Tears of Amaterasu. This is the first of six in the Imperial Cycle and as Fantasy Flight Games uh, has organized it, we will get one of these each week. Well, I don't know um, how soon we will get them here in the Netherlands, but the planning is one each week. Now then, Amaterasu is... Uh, the first son. She was the wife of Ono Tangu, the first moon, and the mother and the mother of all the kami, the mother of all of humanity and chief of the fortunes. Just like in real life, Amaterasu was the goddess of the sun. Right, let's open it up and see what we'll get. Um, all of these are fixed, so if you buy one pack, you'll get yeah the same if you buy more. So there's really no point in doing that unless you have multiple players playing with your cards. Then you can have an overlap of such. Right, uh, we'll, oh, we'll get a booklet, which tears easily. Um, with a little bit of story, that's nice. And we get more story, 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 story. As is tradition with this game, with this world. A lot of story. Right, like I said, if you buy one of these, you'll get all of the same cards. And every single card is uh, a playset. So we'll get three of each. And here we can see the blood of Ono Tangu. As we have said, that was the uh, spouse of Amaterasu. Right, um, let's see. How does this open? It's one of those... Uh. It's horrible to open packs. Oh, wait. I spoke too soon. Actually, quite easy. Right then, um, I have played a lot of tournaments uh, already. And I will be looking at this through a Scorpion Clan point of view. So, we are currently, as of filming right now, the Seeker of the Void. So we can use the Blood of Onotangu. Which is a new province. Three strengths. That's a bit... Eh. During conflicts at this province, each player cannot spend fate from his or her fate pool. Right, this is a bit tricky, but you'll uh, ensure that your opponent cannot uh, use those nasty lion and unicorn cards to call in the cavalry and such. Um, as a scorpion player, I've noticed a lot of our cards are zero. Some of them are one, but still... Uh, Tears of Amaterasu is a keeper-only card, uh, also province, 4 strength. We cannot use this, but other clans can. Reaction, after this province is revealed, gain 1 fate for each attacking creature. Ho ho, that is nasty to play against the Lion Clan, for example. Which I believe are the keeper of earth at the moment. Hmm. Staunch Hida for the Crab Clan. Uh, it's a 2 fate, 2 dash. And as we all uh, know, dash cannot be entered in, uh, in this case, in a political conflict. Uh, reaction after this character wins a conflict as a defender. Resolve the ring effect of that conflict as if you were the attacking player. Max one per conflict. That is pretty nice, actually. I really like that. But we cannot splash it. That's too bad. And we have a uh, holding for the Crab Clan. We have the Karada District. Um, it's an Imperial holding, plus one. Limit one per deck. So, yeah, we get three. I don't know why. Hmm. All right. Action. Give an opponent one fate. Choose an attachment on a character that player controls. Take control of that attachment and attach it to an eligible character you control, if able. Otherwise, discard it. I don't know why we get three. If there's a limit, one per deck, but there, yeah, I'm guessing there's a reason for it. Uh, Doji re uh, representative, uh, it's a courtier, uh, one three for three, two glory. Uh, action during a conflict, move this character home. It's a crane clan. I haven't played against crane yet, so I don't know if this is a welcome card. For the dragon, we have uh, Kitsuki Yaruma. It's a 4 fate character for 2-4. Also courtier, glory of 2. It has courtesy and no poison attachments. Right, cannot be poisoned. Cool. 
As a reaction, after this character enters play, choose an unbroken province, turn that province face down. Oh, that is pretty nice. So you can trigger a reaction uh, yet again if you reveal it, like this one. Yes, trigger it multiple times. Very, very nice. Then we have for the Lion Clan, the Gifted Tactician. It's a uh, two fate, two one, one glory. As a reaction, after this character wins a military conflict, draw one card. Not too bad. And we also have um, a holding for the lion. Also a limit one per deck, and we get three. Hmm. Uh, it's plus one. And political conflicts cannot be declared against this holdings province. Okay. Hmm, that's pretty nasty. Then we have for the Phoenix, Isawa Kaeda, for 5 Fate. Ooh, that's pretty hefty. I believe only the champion is 5 Fate for the Phoenix. Uh, it's a 3-4, three, 3 Glory. Uh, so it is a Shugenya, and it's immune to opponent's ring effects. Alright, uh, while this character is attacking, the contested ring gains the Void element. If this character wins the conflict as an attacker, instead of choosing an element to resolve, resolve each of that ring's effects. So the ring gains void. So for example, if you if your uh, opponent chose wait, if you chose air, it also gains void. Normally, you would have to choose which one to resolve. This one resolves both. That's nice. And for the unicorn, uh, we have Swift Magistrate for three. Fate, we have a 2-2 character with one glory. Uh, while this character is attacking, each other character that has one or more fate on it does not count its skill toward the resolution of this conflict. <laughs> okay, that is uh, that that is pretty weird. But very nice, actually. Hmm. And also uh, holding for the unicorn, the windswept yurt. Ah, see it doesn't have a, a limit restriction to it. Uh, it has an action, sacrifice this holding, select one. Each player gains two fate, or each player gains two honor. Refill this province face up. Nice. Then we get the first of the seals. We get seal of the crane, which is zero fate for a zero, uh, plus zero plus one. Um, it's an item seal. Attached character gains the crane clan symbol and the dualist traits. And these cards are splashable, as you can see here. Next up, the disdainful remark. For one fate, uh, we have a keeper role only. An action during a conflict, if you control a participating courtier character, until the end of the conflict, the attacked province gains plus X strength, X is the equal uh, to the number of cards in your opponent's hand. Wow, that is pretty crazy. Then we get, ooh, that's a nice looking card. Jade Masterpiece. For one, uh, we get a plus zero plus one for the dragon. And it has the action, uh, bow, this and, uh, bow this attachment. Choose an unclaimed ring. Move one fate from the chosen ring to another claimed, uh, unclaimed ring. Cool. Then we have time for war for the lion. Zero fate event, uh, seeker role only, reaction, after you lose a uh, political conflict, choose a bushy character you control, put a weapon attachment with printed cost 3 or lower into play from your hand or conflict discard pile, attached to that character. That's pretty nice, uh, most weapons actually cost 3 or lower, I haven't seen uh, one that I can think of that is... Uh, Higher than that. For the Phoenix, Embrace the Void, uh, zero fate, plus zero, plus zero. You can only uh, play it if you control a Shugenja. And it has the interrupt. When one or more fate would be removed from attached character, instead move that fate to your fate pool. That is pretty nice. Ah, finally the first of the Scorpion cards. Uh, I was already thinking, I haven't seen any in the Dynasty part of the pack. Now in the conflict part, we have one. The Meek Informant. For one, we have a dash one. Uh, zero glory, that's always good for Scorpion. That way you can dishonor your characters without the penalty of losing. Strength. Uh, it has a, a reaction. After you play this character, look at an opponent's hand. That information is invaluable. That way you can uh, decide whether to attack or not. And hey, it's a peasant. 
Oh, get three of these. And we have smoke and mirrors. Uh, for one, uh, we get a technique um, with an action. During a conflict, choose any number of attacking Shinobi characters you control. Move each chosen character home. All right, so if um, the battle turns out to be unfavorable, you can just simply retreat with your Shinobi. Very nice card. Very nice indeed. A bit defensive, but nice. And we have our first Shadowlands card here. That's pretty interesting. It's a Goblin Sneak. For two fate, we get a one dash zero glory. And as a reaction, after this character enters play, plays one fate from an opponent's fate pool on it. So you can steal your opponent's fate, and that way uh, make sure they don't do tricks that cost more than they have. Uh, in the combat f step, I th probably think I will um, experiment with these cards. It seems like a lot of fun. Yes. And we have the Finger of Jade. This is a card I'm actually afraid of um, to see against me. It is one fate for a plus zero plus zero and attached to a character you control. It has the interrupt when the effects of a card ability that targets attached creature would initiate, sacrifice this attachment, cancel those effects. So, that means assassinate will be cancelled. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, I can swim will be cancelled. All those dishonor stuff will be cancelled. This is a really na nasty card against the scorpion. So, that's the very first pack. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this first pack. And uh, yeah, I hope the other one gets, uh, gets here really soon. So we can continue this nice imperial cycle. Thank you all for watching and see you guys next time. Bye bye.